Okay, so to attach the, the bottom plate of the clean frame onto the dirty frame, we're going to need these four lock nuts, and they're going to be attached to the bobbins. So we'll start with the first one. So we use the caps and the M3 6mm. I find it easy to hold it on the, the 2mm driver and we're going to apply the thread lock. Holding onto the cap, we're going to lower it down. and screw it into place. Okay, so we need to do the other three. Okay, how I like to install the buzzer is I wrap a heat shrink around the standoff and on the buzzer. And it looks nice and it stays put. And sniff off the extra. So buzzers mounted. So for my build, I'm using uh, Spectrum, uh, the carbon fuselage receiver. It's got the nice long antennas. And I know some of you are like, what? Spectrum? But it's what I have. And if I had a Tyrannus, I'll be using a Tyrannus. Uh, this receiver is pretty expensive for a Spectrum, but it gives me incredible range and it works for this setup. So I've got all the PWM connectors plugged in. And I've put double-sided tape. And there it goes right there. I positioned it like this so that the antennas can go sideways out. And that's a good spot for that right there. Okay, so next we're going to prepare the top plate for the clean frame. So the first thing we're going to work on is a way to root the antenna wires and protect it. So. The easiest way is to use two zip ties. Okay, so there you go. So we'll leave these the way they are right now. Next, we need to install the SMA antenna port. So you're going to need a quarter inch grommet and we're going to insert it onto this spot. And it's a little bit tricky to get these in. You want to get one side in first. And I find it helps to get something to push the other side in. So the SMA fits pretty snug, okay, like that. So from the top, the antenna plugs right in and it isolates the SMA from the carbon fiber. It's the perfect way to do this. So let's remove the antenna again. On a side note, uh, I'd like to apply heat shrink over my antenna to cover the SMA. That way you can use the entire shaft to tighten and untighten the antenna. It's something that I do. And next, we need to add the, the VTX. Now this is the VTX that uh, is available on the store and it's from Surveil Zone and it's quite nice. It's a 600 uh, milliwatt version. Uh, it uses a RP SMA antenna, so we need a gender bender. So we're going to convert that into the SMA. So we're going to tighten that in. And that's going to get tightened onto here.
So I've gone ahead and I've mounted the VTX onto the top plate and it's being connected through the 5 centimeter SMA extension. Now the reason why I've oriented like this is that I wanted the dip switches for changing the channels uh, very visible and I positioned it so that it's right where the cutout is on the front. And it's attached with two zip ties, one that goes around the SMA port and the second around the body. So at this point we're pretty much ready to attach the top plate onto the frame here. So let's get our hardware. Uh, we're going to be using the same, the M3 6mm and we're going to attach to all points of these standoffs. So we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so I think we're ready for the jet seat. So that's going to fit into the front. And I've left out the middle one. So when I told you we need 11 of these, actually we only need 10. So we're going to put the top in. So the jet seat slides in from the front. And the hole lines up from the top. So we're going to be mounting the the FPV camera. So the one that we use is the Mini 600 TVL CCD and that's going to be mounted here. So it comes with a mounting bracket which is going to sit on top. Okay, so that's on there. Now the camera, if you look at the stand, some of these uh, brackets have one hole or some have three. Uh, if it does have three, you can add, either put it in the top one or have it one down lower. I prefer the, the one down, down lower because it provides uh, better height on the camera. See, so that's in the middle hole. I'll show you what the uh, the top hole looks like. And like that. It sits a lot higher and I think it's better lower. Now if you do have one of the older brackets that only has the one hole, you can drill out the second hole. And that's actually what I've been doing before. They brought out these mounts with the, the multiple holes. So once you get that in place, it, the kit also comes with some uh, little screws. So we're going to need to attach that. Okay, so the camera is now mounted on the top. So what's left is we need to power up the VTX. So using the two leads that we brought up from the step down, they're going to plug into this. So the power goes into power. And ground goes into ground. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to need an FPV cable for the camera. Now the camera kit does come with a wire and you can use that as well. So I'm going to have it go down through here, but it's nice. These grommets are nice, right? So I'm going to use another grommet. Okay, so get the one side in and then push the other side. Okay, so there we go. So the rubber grommet will protect it. We did file it and smooth it, but for me, the FPV camera cable is very important. If anything goes wrong there, uh, we're going to lose video, so it's a good thing to keep protected. 
Now, one thing to note, uh, depending on the release of your camera, even though it's the same model, some I found has different layouts for what is ground and video and power. So double check because I've one time been shipped the wrong cable for the pen layout and I had to remove the wires and reorganize it to a different way. It can happen. So don't take it for granted that it's the same on every camera even though it's the same model. So that plugs in there. And then double check here that it's going in the right. So the white is the video, yellow is the video on this side. And that plugs in, like that. that. Uh, you don't want any loose wires inside because sometimes if you're doing maneuvers or if you have a crash, the cables can come out and the propeller can have a nice little slice at it. And that's not fun. So let's get rid of the excess zip tie. Oh, this is actually getting really excited because I've been working on this build for for quite a while now uh, to shoot this video and it's very satisfying to see it coming coming to life. So we're almost there. Uh, we're going to route the antenna wire. So how it works is that the antenna is going to come up through the frame and it's going to use the zip tie as a support. So we're going to be doing it about there. Leave some slack in the bottom here don't have it too taut and we're gonna cut the zip tie where the antenna ends like that okay so we're gonna do the same on this side okay so there we go just clean this one up Now over that, we're going to put heat shrink and we're going to shrink it. Okay, so like that. While it's still hot, I find it's still pliable, so I like to shape it. Okay, so that's good right there. So those are finished. Now, the last thing we have to do before we can fire this up is add the LiPo plug. So to do that, we need to place the lipo where we're going to have it and figure out where the cable's going to go and how the the plug's going to meet up with it and it's really up to you uh, some people keep it really long and they zip tie it and they figure out what works uh, this is an important part uh, take some time figure out is the battery going to sit like that is it going to sit up there uh, is it going to be really strange and, and sit up this way, which I don't recommend. So let's see. I'm really kind of liking this tall format. And if we have it like this on the top, okay, so say it comes out this way and we zip it down. Now we attach another one over here. Oh, I'm really liking this. Yeah. So like that. So it's always sitting on top, which makes lipo insertion really nice. So let's say the plug it's going to be about here, so let's cut the wire at around that spot right there. 
Okay. So then, for now, let's remove these zip ties. And we'll solder on the XT60 on these. All right, guys, I think that time has come. The build is finished. I've soldered the LiPo plug. I've connected it to clean flight. Did all the calibrations. The motors are spinning in all the right directions. The VTX, the camera, is sending beautifully. The Hero 4 Black is up at front waiting for its first fly through the sky. I wanna thank everyone for watching. I hope this build video has been helpful and I present to you the Epic Mini 280 V2 Turbo.